Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at how Ubisoft's latest open world adventure game, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, compares visually to CD Projekt's hugely popular open world adventure from 2015, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Now, this particular subject has been heavily requested ever since Valhalla first released, and I've held off on it simply because there were way too many games to cover alongside those new console launches. But because I've been replaying the Witcher series for an upcoming documentary set to release in the coming weeks, I've decided to revisit this analysis, as I couldn't help but notice some pretty striking similarities between the two titles. Ubisoft was very likely inspired by the likes of The Witcher 3 when they began the Origins trilogy of games, with a much heavier focus on RPG gameplay mechanics and exploration, as opposed to the series' original focus on stealth action. And while Odyssey was similar in many regards, Valhalla's Old England setting makes the similarities even more apparent. For this analysis, both games are being played on the PC, with their settings cranked up to their highest values at a native 4K resolution. However, any motion blur options will be disabled to improve the image clarity. Now, bear in mind that The Witcher 3 released way back in 2015, and the fact that it's even comparable this many years later is extremely impressive all on its own. So we should expect most of the visual effects to be superior in a game that only just released, especially when you consider that it was intended for a newer generation of console platforms. However, as you'll soon discover, there's still a few aspects of The Witcher 3 that offer some stiff competition, which makes this all the more interesting. Also, before we get started, be sure to keep it tuned to my channel soon for a full documentary on the history of The Witcher. I'm currently in the final stages of this project and am excited to share it with you soon. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel, set your alerts, and follow me on Twitter for additional updates. Alright, so let's kick this comparison off by first taking a look at the quality of the character models, starting with our lead protagonist, Geralt and Eivor. Now, I mentioned before with my Witcher and Odyssey comparison that the two character models were pretty close in quality, with a slight lean towards Odyssey's higher fidelity lighting and shading. But with Valhalla, the scales have been tipped even further, with some absolutely gorgeous in-game character models that far exceed the quality of the models in The Witcher 3. The poly count is higher, the skin textures are superior, and the way light interacts with the facial model thanks to more advanced subsurface scattering all help to create a far more believable looking lead character. One detail in particular that really stands out is the hair quality. The hair in Valhalla, especially Eivor's beard, looks incredibly realistic, with variable length and nice soft shadowing that adds a believable level of depth. Geralt's beard, on the other hand, feels really disconnected. The hair fibers don't react as naturally to the ambient lighting, and there's no shadowing to help it feel like it's attached to his face. What's more, the hairs appear weirdly flat and overly thick, likely as a way to circumvent the need to draw thousands more hairs to make it appear fuller. Now, that being said, The Witcher 3's hair does offer something that Valhalla's hair does not, in that it's more dynamic. Not only does Geralt's hair flow realistically thanks to special NVIDIA Hairworks technology, but Geralt's beard even grows throughout the course of the game, and can be shaved off by visiting a barber in Novigrad. You can alter the look of Eivor's beard in Valhalla, but it doesn't appear to ever grow on its own, and advanced hair simulation techniques like Nvidia's Hairworks or AMD's Tress FX don't seem to be available for this particular title either. Moving away from the face, the comparison is not quite as cut and dry. The clothing textures applied to both characters' default armor remain competitive, especially the appearance of hardened leather. In fact, I'd argue that the texture maps and shaders used on Geralt's belt and waist look a little bit better than the rough leather used for similar cosmetic pieces on Eivor's person. What's more, smaller details like these medallions and pennants are much more intricate and detailed in The Witcher than in Assassin's Creed, something that we previously observed when looking at how Odyssey stacked up to The Witcher in the past. The random townsfolk are also worth looking at, as the difference is even more striking. If there's one thing that hasn't held up well with The Witcher 3, it's the design of these NPCs, that are often very simplistic with much more basic texture maps and a dead look in their eyes. The hairworks you see with Geralt and other creatures are not at play here, and so what you're left with are some fairly static and lifeless looking characters populating the world. The NPCs in Valhalla, on the other hand, while certainly not as impressive as Eivor for obvious reasons, still sport some really impressive details, like similarly realistic hair, high resolution textures, and some great variety. Then we have the player's mounts. 
Now, neither game really has that great looking of horses, especially when stacked up to the incredible looking designs Rockstar introduced in both of their Red Dead Redemption games. But at least when talking about these two particular games, there's only a few really important distinctions worth pointing out. First, just like with Eivor and Geralt, the texture quality of the horse's fur appears higher res in AC Valhalla than in The Witcher. What's more, the leather harnesses and straps are also much cleaner in appearance. But surprisingly, despite the hair looking much better with its human characters, the same doesn't seem to hold true when looking at the manes of Assassin's Creed's horses. The hair is all clumped together, and it frequently clips through the model, with jarring pointed ridges along the back, as opposed to Witcher's roach, where the hair appears more naturally and exhibits similar dynamic hair effects as Geralt's hair. What's more, the actual animations of these horses are significantly better in The Witcher, with a more believable gallop that seems to have some real weight to it, rather than the weightless and disconnected feel of the horses in Assassin's Creed. Again, neither game really gets the horses just right, but because Roach plays such an important role, expanding the player's inventory and holding onto cool monster trophies, it's not surprising that more attention went into designing her than the horses in AC Valhalla, that are often just a simple means of transportation across short distances. The animations of the characters, especially the player models, offer about the same results as we discovered in the past. Geralt's walking and running animation feels more stiff and unnatural than Eivor's, and that cool, gladiator-inspired hand-brushing animation when walking through fields of wheat is still included. Moving on, let's talk about the environments. For those of you unfamiliar, The Witcher 3 takes place in a fictional fantasy world inspired heavily by medieval Europe, including several iconic buildings in and around Poland which makes sense as the creator and the developers at CD Projekt Red are based in that country. This provides a beautiful open countryside for a setting, with wide open valleys nestled between dense forested regions and huge cities like Novigrad. Valhalla, on the other hand, is a fictional story that takes place in an 873 AD Europe during the Viking exodus into England. The world and its many villages and towns are even more closely based on real world locations, and are intended to capture that era in history in a far more accurate sense. What's interesting though, is that because both games take place around the same era in history, and in relatively similar regions of the world, the environments look very similar to each other. There's thatch roof villages, large crumbling medieval castle ruins, and vast forested regions, split up by lots of rivers and rolling hillsides. But just like with the character models, a closer look reveals that AC Valhalla has a technical advantage here. Wall and ground surfaces all offer higher resolution texture maps, and the tessellation effects used to create a recognizable depth, especially when looking at things like stone walls and bumpy dirt roads, all greatly benefit Assassin's Creed Valhalla. However, one thing that I think The Witcher 3 does a better job with than Valhalla is its vegetation. The valleys of former Temeria and Redania are populated with some incredibly dense and realistic looking vegetation making for some of the more believable forests and valleys I've witnessed in a game. On top of this, the vegetation even blows realistically thanks to the game's dynamic weather system, and in combination with the sound effects, perfectly captures the feeling of being out in the wilderness. AC Valhalla, while gorgeous looking, doesn't really capture the same look and feel. Sure, there's some beautifully dense forested regions with lots of great looking vegetation, most of which will actually react to the player's presence, but it all feels static by comparison and the vegetation doesn't have nearly the same jaw distance offered by The Witcher 3, making bushes and grass pop up only a few hundred yards away. Moving on, we have the lighting. Here we have the difference between authentic and stylistic quality. I think one thing that The Witcher 3 has always really excelled at is delivering truly realistic looking lighting effects. The coloration of its world and the implementation of global illumination all contribute to an incredibly realistic looking image that works hand in hand with the particular environments that players are traversing through. Darker regions like the swamps in former Temeria, for example, feel genuinely dark and moody, with more frequent cloud layers and rainstorms to help set the atmosphere, while more lively locations like the city of Novigrad are bright and vibrant. AC Valhalla takes a slightly different approach. The lighting in its world is most definitely more advanced, with far more impressive volumetric effects and superior god ray implementation and you get plenty of examples of this every time the sun rises and sets. Though I did find that the nighttime scenes feel overly bright, as there's a consistent blue hue to it from the moonlight that never changes, as opposed to The Witcher, where there's an actual dynamic lunar cycle that will adjust the amount of light that appears on the valley floor. 
It's because of this that I think Valhalla, while beautiful looking, isn't quite as realistic looking, opting for style over authenticity. It's most definitely technically superior, but The Witcher 3 delivers a far more realistic look regardless. Next, we have Shadows. With Shadows, we have a lot of the same observations that I made before. The player's shadows appear softer in The Witcher 3, with less shimmering around the edges. But the ambient occlusion applied to environmental features helps to give Valhalla's world a little bit more depth, assisted further by the tessellation that I mentioned earlier. But what I found really interesting was the cloud shadows. One aspect I really love about AC Valhalla over Odyssey was the incorporation of rolling cloud shadows across the valley floor. They're not based on the actual cloud positions, but rather programmed in to simulate the look of a partly cloudy day. However, it seems The Witcher 3 offers an even more impressive cloud simulation design, with real-time shadows from the cloud coverage that changes dynamically. Some days it'll be mostly clear, with no shadows cast from clouds at all, while other days you'll see that very same cloud shadow effect that is simulated in Valhalla. It's a nice attention to detail that I never picked up on before, that again puts this five-year-old game ahead of its much more modern competitor. Next we have our effects. Once again, The Witcher 3 manages to hold up remarkably well, with fire effects from things like torches that far exceed the same types of fire in AC Valhalla. But I'm still a bit torn regarding the water quality. On the one hand, the water surface looks much better in Valhalla, with superior wave simulation and reflective properties, giving it an almost lifelike appearance. What's more, I absolutely love the way the water ripples when the player swims or wades through it, especially when considering how weirdly oily the water looks in The Witcher 3. However, the water offers slightly more interactivity in The Witcher, with more rippling effects when running around in it, and more splash particles when swimming along the surface. I also appreciate how Geralt's hair will actually appear wet and matted when getting out of the water, rather than the weird temporary shader applied that looks like a layer of oil in Valhalla. Finally, let's wrap up with a brief sound comparison. Which game do you think has the better audio quality and design?
arm is lethal. Did your elder hold for fellow? And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, despite some mild improvements in AC Valhalla, CD Projekt's masterpiece from 2015 still offers some stiff competition in the visual department. The character models and environments are unsurprisingly superior in AC Valhalla, with higher quality textures and higher poly counts. But the attention to detail, the denser vegetation, and more authentic lighting design help keep The Witcher 3 still looking incredible almost six years later. I think, overall, AC Valhalla is undoubtedly a more technically and visually impressive title. But the fact that The Witcher 3 even stands a chance so long after release goes to show just how great of a technical achievement that the game continues to be, and why it's revered by so many fans as one of the very best games to come out of the last console generation. But what do you guys think? Is AC Valhalla, at least from a visual and technical perspective, superior? Or do you feel that The Witcher 3 reigns supreme between the two? Let me know in the comments section. Also, if you want to learn more about The Witcher, I have a big documentary on the series planned in the coming weeks that will take a deep dive into the series' creation and evolution. If you want to catch that, make sure you set up your alerts so you don't miss it. And of course, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more content like this posted every week.